Good morning. I am Dr. Swati Chalan, consultant obstetrician and gynecologist, laparoscopic surgeon and infertility specialist practicing at Institute of Human Reproduction, Guwahati. Today I am going to discuss with you all about fetal growth restriction that is FGR or IUGR babies. Now what do we mean by IUGR babies? As you must have commonly heard about it, IUGR babies as the name itself implies it is intrauterine growth restriction that is those babies which are low birth weight and have failed to achieve their growth potential in the intrauterine life. The basic challenge is identifying those babies which are constitutionally small, those which have fulfilled their growth potential from these babies who are pathologically small that is those which have which have failed to develop their growth potential and those are the IUGR babies because these IUGR babies are associated with a high incidence of perinatal morbidity and mortality. The overall incidence of IUGR ranges from around 10 to 15 percent so we know it's quite high and if we can prevent these IUGR babies or we can identify the risk factors at the earliest we can uh, prevent much of the adverse outcomes. So uh, first of all we need to know the risk factors or the causative factors for the IUGR babies. The causative factors can be divided into the maternal factors, fetal factors and the placental factors. The maternal factors are the, uh, if the mother is uh, at the extremes of age, if she's too young or she's on the higher side, say more than 35 years at the time of delivery or there is uh, some uh, poor socioeconomic status, she is anemic, she is suffering from any uh, cr um, chronic uh, diseases like uh, chronic hypertension, diabetes mellitus or uh, this short interpregnancy interval, their history of substance abuse like she is using alcohol or uh, smoking. So these are some maternal risk factors, common risk factors which are associated with IUGR babies. Then comes the fetal factors. The fetal factors can be genetic. Then uh, there might be some congenital malformations. There might be fetal infections. Then uh, there are uh, even the multiple pregnancy is associated with IUGR babies. Then comes the placental factors. The placental factors are uh, the low-lying placenta like the placenta previa or there might be abraxial placenta or uh, if there is an adherent placenta, we call it the placenta accreta. There are some placental tumors and even the single umbilical artery might be associated with IGR babies. So having known these risk factors, we need to identify the risk factors at the earliest. Now how? How do we identify the risk factors? First of all, a proper history taking is very important. If she is suppose, as I've said, she is suffering from any high risk factors, then the proper regular, proper and regular antenatal checkups. Uh, during the antenatal checkups, uh, very much emphasis is la laid upon the weight gain of the patient. If she is ad gaining adequate weight. If the sympathio fundal height during antenatal examination, we check the fundal height of the baby. If the sympathio fundal height is gaining adequately and um, she is gaining adequate weight, then she is uh, unlikely to have an IGR baby. Uh, then comes the role of sonography. The sonography or the Doppler ultrasound is remains the mainstay of diagnosing an IGR baby. So having all these modalities in hand. We should identify the IGR babies at the earliest to prevent all the perinatal morbidity and mortalities. Thank you so much.